call on Mwishma Madha Karua to make the rest of the statement. The party for the notes, before then, Samahani, the government has entered into a public-private partnership with militia to cripple freedom of assembly and protests. The party for the notes that the security withdrawal comes days after William Ruto promised Kusafirisha, Honorable Raila Odinga, and President Uhuru Kenyatta. Indeed, we remain eternally grateful to Mr. Ruto for uttering those words out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth spoke. It is a warning. It also comes days after Ruto openly instructed Kenya Kwanza to recruit and arm supporters for a confrontation with protesters. Ruto has called his supporters to Kenya's version of Armageddon. The meeting held at State House last Saturday was clearly a planning meeting. It came up with a clear command, control, funding, and mobilization of resources and people structures for purposes of carrying out genocide. Its resolutions are already being implemented in various parts of the country where some governors are mobilizing people to counter protesters. It is also taking the shape of greater surveillance being conducted around our leaders' homes and offices which are being surveyed by people in unmarked vehicles. What Ruto decreed in State House last week is part of what is going on in Sondru Kericho and Kisi Kericho boundaries, where an ethnic militia is being armed against local communities. The militia has protection of the police. The events in Sondru are expected to be replicated in other parts of the country in coming days. We further take note that although Kenya is not at war, all police and other security officers have been recalled from leave to deal with protesters. The provisions of the Constitution on the right to protest notwithstanding, Ruto is at war, not just with Azimio, but with the entire Kenya population especially those who do not support him. We appeal to our neighbors in the region not to join Ruto's war against Kenyans. Our neighbors must not supply Ruto with tear gas and ammunition to fight Kenyans. Our crime is only that we have challenged Ruto to bring down the cost of food, reconstitute the IEBC, in a way that includes all players, also to audit the ra last year's presidential elections or elections and to respect political parties. As leaders, we have reached the decision that we shall fear not those who kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. So, even with the intimidation of withdrawal of security, as Mio confirms that the protests planned for Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday this week are on as earlier announced. We appeal to the police to be professional, to resist being turned into a killer squad for hire by politicians and a regime suffering acute legitimacy deficit. We appeal to our police to maintain their professionalism, that's once again, that has been seen from some of its members who have participated in un 
UN missions across the globe with enhanced individual careers and who have lifted the image of our country. We appeal to them to resist being used to provide cover to tribal militia that kills people in the name of policing. A time comes when all the crimes will be answered for by everyone involved, including Ruto himself. They need to think and think again before committing these crimes against citizens. We remind Ruto and entire police service that responsibility for protection of Kenya is not a shared duty. And our constitution, the duty bearer, is the state and the law enforcement agencies. As protesters, what is required of us is just to give a notice that we will be having a procession. We have given adequate notice. It is their duty to ensure that no criminal elements infiltrate the protests and turn them violent. And in our experience, it is the police who have turned peaceful protests violent. We take this opportunity to thank the UN Human Rights Office for calling out the government, the Ruto regime, over the use of excessive force by police to quell protests. Indeed, the use of force has been unnecessary and totally disproportionate and has included use of firearms and shooting with an intention to kill and actually killing. We have always appealed to our protesters to remain peaceful and we ask them to continue doing so. We urge our people to obey the law, respect private property and even public property in the course of protest. We maintain that we have always been peaceful until police decide to, to import violence 